People love going to the airport for trips, experiencing the joy of clean surrounding, meeting family, and exploring new destinations. But what if the airport was not just a place to visit, but your actual home? Hey guys, welcome to the Aviation by Ali. Today we went to delve into a strange but true story. 18 years of imprisonment at the airport. Mehran Karimi Nasri, also known as Alfred, was born in 1947 in the city of Masjid Suleiman in Iran, into a relatively well-off family. His father, Abdul Karim Nasri, was a doctor working for an oil company. Mehran completed his early education in Iran. After that, he entered university and started studying psychology. I finished Diploma Mathematics in, in three years, four years. And in three years, uh, license in uh, Bachelor in uh, Psychology. At the age of 23, after graduating in Psychology, he lost his father. During this difficult time of losing his father, the family told him that his real mother is a Scottish nurse who worked with his father in the oil Iranian English company and had gone to Glasgow. Mehran is evicted from home and resorts to threatening a court complaint. In the final agreement, they decided that Mehran should go to England for further education and receive a monthly allowance. After three years of studying at Bradford University, his family cuts off his financial support. He attempts to contact his family in Iran, but his calls and letters goes on unanswered. In 1977, he returns to Tehran and gets arrested for participating in demonstrations against the Shah. His mother bribes official for his release on the condition that he leaves Iran forever. With the intention of finding his mother in England, Mehran left Iran. He sought asylum in seven countries and finally in October 1981, his asylum request was accepted in Belgium. Mehran stayed in Brussels studying and receiving social assistance. He brought a ferry ticket for a journey to England and during this sea voyage, he threw his Belgium asylum papers into the ferry mailbox. Mehran, upon disembarking in England, had no document to prove his identity. The UK government sent him back to Belgium, and the Belgium sent him back to England. The UK government had sent him on a ship to the port of Boulogne. The French government detained Mehran for illegal entry for sentence him to four months in prison. After his release, he had 84 hours to leave France. He headed to Charles de Gaulle Airport to go to England. At Heathrow Airport, due to lack of identification documents, he was sent back to Charles de Gaulle Airport. The French government was uncertain about which country to send Mehran to since he had no proof of nationality. Eventually, the decision was made that Mehran was not allowed to Charles de Gaulle Airport. Mehran's new loans began on August 8, 1980, in a corner of Terminal 1 at Charles de Gaulle Airport sitting on a red bench. This is a summary of Mehran Vandering story narrated to Michael Paternity, an American magazine journalist, in September 2003. Christine Bourgeois, an activist lawyer dealing with asylum seekers' issues, voluntarily approached Mehran in 1989 to help him leave the airport and provided temporary residence in, in Paris with a visa. Bourgeois' efforts in Parisian courts led to the conclusion that Mehran should reclaim his asylum case from Belgian government. However, according to Belgian laws, the entry of an asylum seeker who has refrained from accepting asylum is prohibited, even in exceptional cases. 
Returning to Belgium was impossible for Meron as he had no documentation for legal entry to Brussels Airport. Life at Charles de Gaulle Airport continued until 1999, when the French government granted him temporary residence, allowing him to leave the airport and move to the city. To exit the airport, Meron had to sign documents stating that he was Meron Karimi Nasri, born in 1946. Iranian and the son of Abdul Karim. However, Mehran refused to sign the document and told Bourgeois, I am not Iranian. In 2003, Christian Bourgeois told Paternity, I realized he had lost control of reality. He was on the brink of madness. He didn't want to leave the airport because outside of it, he had no identity. He had become a star in this airport. If you approach him with a camera, he displays his best behaviors. But outside the frame, he is a broken man. Mehran Karimi Nasseri, an Iranian man who lived in Charles de Gaulle Airport in Paris for 18 years, has become the subject of the book and a film due to the strange story of his life. Mehran had four brothers and two sisters, all of from a middle-class background, living in Tehran. Mehran used to send letters to his family for a while, but they stopped receiving them later on. With the Iranian Revolution and then the war with Iraq, his family faced their own difficulties. However, after four years of silence, they went to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to seek help in finding him. Kuru said, we couldn't find any trace of him. In 1991, one of Mehran family's friends saw him at Charles de Gaulle Airport's terminal, approached him, but Mehran claimed not to recognize him. After that, several family members and friends tried to approach Alfred, but he had the same response with all of them. Eventually, the family gave up on trying to bring Mehran back. It was later revealed that Mehran's mother had passed away in 2000, and Mehran was unaware of her death. He knew everything about what had happened to his son and couldn't understand why he insisted on saying he wasn't his mother. This was the great sorrow of his life, and she had told her children, I brought him into the world. Why does he say such things? Was Mehran embarrassed about his past? Did the well-read, politically passionate son consider himself a failure? Was that why they distanced himself from friends and family? Why did he tell reporters that his family had disowned him? Dalfred, I knew I had arrived at the airport in good health. But at some point along this journey, at an unknown time and place, he succumbed to madness. His life was shattered by empty bureaucracy. He was a tall man with thin black hair, bright and intelligent eyes. His bench was surrounded by several wheeled carts and numerous boxes and bags his containing his belongings, creating something akin to a nest around him. His most valuable positions was a large number of A4 paper boxes containing his memories. For over a decade, he had been writing down his daily memories on paper provided by the kind airport doctor. Being stuck in the airport terminal meant that Alfred's life lacked any kind of structure, so he created one for himself. Every morning, before the airport got busy, he would leave his bench, go to bathroom and shave. Then he'd buy his breakfast from the McDonald's menu and the visit the airport newsstand to buy or have given to him a few newspapers. After that, he would return to his bench, have breakfast, and as the airport came to life around him, often unnoticed by passerby, he would spend most of the day writing, page after page filled by his spider-like black handwriting. Crawling across the online paper, he wrote about everything. After writing his memories, he claiming ritual, he perfumed throughout the day. 
Alfred would turn his attention to newspapers. He found solace in reading and engaging in discussion about global politics. During his stay at the airport, using translation, dictionaries and suitable articles, he had self-taught himself to read French and German. He was a knowledgeable man and disliked wasting time. Alfred didn't have mobile phone, a form of isolation that is almost unimaginable in today's world. Mehran became the subject of European and American media from 1998 when journalists heard about an Iranian asylum seeker living in Charles de Gaulle airport in Paris due to the loss of identity document. 2006 Mehran was transferred to the hospital for surgery to remove a tumor in his head. After surgery, on the afternoon 12 November, the French news agency reported an airport official said Mehran Karimi Nasseri, an Iranian who lived in Paris airport for 18 years and inspired Steven Spielberg's film, passed away from natural causes in Terminal F2 of Charles de Gaulle Airport on Saturday afternoon. The airport is a land that isn't meant for everyone, an endless limbo that Mehran could never leave. Thanks for watching this video. If you like this, Please click on subscribe and also the like button.